Uh, we're glad to know that you're still there and watching the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And uh, right now, we're going to the national dailies uh, to see what the headlines are. We'll begin with uh, Punch, Punch newspaper this morning on Off the Press. Punch leads with the story, APC Big Weeks jostle for ministerial slots. Tinubu names eight SAs. And the writer to that story uh, is uh, Party Chieftains Favor Keyamo Omagege Fayemi Adeye Ganduji um, Marafa others. Edun appoints SA on monetary affairs. Alake gets communication. Okay, Edun appointed rather. Essay on Monetary Affairs, Alake Gets Communication, Ribadu Handles Security. Okay. We also have above that, uh, the Naira weakens to 702 Naira per dollar. Uh, CBN Fresh FX Supply Likely. Tinubu Economic Advisors Propose Customs Nimasa FIRS Merger. Fuel subsidy, neck molds, uh, 702 billion naira as workers allowance. Okay, under that, uh, we have uh, some other smaller headlines. EFCC summons Sirica, quizzes Nigeria Air officials. Probe begins as OAU student dies of suspected mer uh, suicide and boat tragedy. Federal government vows prosecution of operators. That will be all from The Punch this morning. From The Punch, we'll move to The Nation newspaper. And The Nation newspaper is leading with CBN abolishes multiple Naira dollar exchange rates. The rider is market-driven currency regime excites financial exports. Above the masthead, you have federal government's 819 billion Naira extra budget littered with ghosts projects. Student loan law takes off in September is another headline. An outrage over death of 106 in Quara boat accident. Tinubu orders probe of EFCC Chairman Stena. DSS detains Bawa after indefinite suspension. That's on the masthead. Well, that's the much I'll be taking from the Nation newspaper. Okay, we'll move now to um, The Guardian. The Guardian newspaper, the major headline there is Costly Rent, Burial Plots, No Resting Place for the Poor, Even in Dead. That's the big story there on page 4 and 5 of The Guardian. Posers over ministerial list as Tinubu unveils henchmen in batches. PMS marketers need $1.8 billion uh, dollars monthly for import as stakeholders move to resolve gray areas. 18,088 blurred election results uploaded to IRF portal, witness tells court. Uh, that will be all we'll be taking from The Guardian this morning. From The Guardian, we'll move to the Daily Independent newspaper, which is leading with Tinubu to governors. Nigerians are awaiting economic reforms to escape poverty. The writers there says, we begged to be elected. We must deliver results. And then the second writer appoints Edun Alake Ribadu other special advisors. Petrol subsidy removal. NEC reviews labor's recommendation of 702 billion naira salary adjustments. High cost of food pushes inflation to 22.41% in May. FG moves mass production of CNG powered vehicles to mitigate impact of fuel subsidy removal. That is on page six of the Daily Independent. Over 150 anti grab CSOs defy rain. Celebrate Bauer suspension. That's on page six. FG directs states to submit report on flood prone areas in one week. That's on page six as well. That's, that's an interesting one. Lots of interesting headlines this morning. Above the masthead, you have 
over 65% of Nigerian men aged 40 at risk of erectile dysfunction. That's according to experts and details of that you can find on page 29. 18,088 blurred election results uploaded to IREF portal, witnesses tell PEPC. ICPC, Bia Reigns, ex-JAM registrar, Ojerinde, children, six others. That's, the, that's all on Daily Independent, which is really loaded this morning. Mm. And then that's the last newspaper's headlines we'll be taking a look at as we go straight to up the press with our guests, G.J. Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of journalism. He's joining us from Lagos this morning. Good morning, Mr. Jide Johnson. So good to have you join us again. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a pleasure to be with you this Friday morning. I want to ask him before. Okay, uh, well, let's just go ahead and begin with some of the headlines. Uh, let's begin with Punch newspaper. Um, ministerial slots. Uh, people are jostling for ministerial slots and they President has already made some appointments, about eight appointments, uh, which um, people are divided whether it is balanced or not. So uh, let's hear your thoughts about uh, these ministerial appointments, the likely ministerial appointments, if these, uh, uh, the appointments that he has made right now gives, give you a picture of uh, what is to come. Um. Basically, if you look at, um, if you use the um, special advisors list, uh, the eight out of the twenty which was given approval for by the by the National Assembly for the president, you understand what is yet to come because uh, well, there is a mix. There is a mix of the old hands that, that you know that have that have worked with the pres with the president when he was governor in Lagos State. It, for example, Ali Edun was his commissioner in Lagos State. Dilil Alaki was his commissioner in Lagos State. And it seems that those guys moved into the areas in which they worked with him in Lagos State. And then you have others that have worked in other states. And then basically, from the look of things, what we are just going to see is just a slight, a slight departure from what you have seen from this special advisor. Um, it will still be made up of people that has worked with him either at the state level or at other state government and then um, others that are just new that are coming on board. But from the uh, from 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 what from what um, Punch newspaper has projected, you are still having if you are still having people like Ganduji, Fire Me, you know. Fire me, Adi Yeyi, Keyamu, Omo Akege. These are actors and players in the last, in the last, in the last. Okay, Adi Yeyi was with Jonathan administration. Um, Fire me was with Buari administration before he went for second time. Ganduji was governor. And then Keyamu was also a minister. And then Omo Akege was the, the, the deputy Senate president for the night. That is that <laughs> assembly. So... It seems as if the more things change, the more they look the same. If we still go around this set of people and then we are complaining about the rot that has happened in the, in the, in the last eight years, then, well, Nigerians should just keep open and open and open. It might, it might be a situation whereby the renewal hope becomes an hopeless situation because what we need are younger, dynamic, resourceful, um, energetic, um, Highly intelligent, cerebral, and not people that that, that have political baggages to be mm. to be heading ministries and departments and agencies of government. But if you are bringing people that still have political ambition, that still have some political baggages, you 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 you, you load government with a lot of with with with, with a lot of burden, political body in order for them to really work in making sure that we are able to deal with some of the challenges that are left behind by the Buhari administration. So okay. that's 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 just my take my take my take on that because if you go to every ministry, every ministry seems to have one issue or the other presently. Um, you see, the president suspended the central bank governor, suspended them, um, the EFCC chairman, 
and then we don't know how, the extent to which this suspension will go. The FCC had already invited the erstwhile Minister of Aviation at the Sirica and then other management staff of, of the Nigerian here. So it's, it's just, it's just, it's just I, I just want to implore the president to, to be circumspect and um, to be circumspect in the process of appointing his, his, his cabinet to, 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 to spread his, his, his net beyond those that has worked with him in the past. So that's, that's just it because... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I still go with this. You are suspect. Uh, Ganduji, Marafa, um, Kayamu, Omar, Gigi, Adiyeyi. All of, all of these people have been, I've heard one position or the other before. They are not the best Nigerians. Are they the only one in Nigeria? Well, we, I think we, we, should, we should move beyond. To see, hopefully some of the names you're calling will not come up when the list finally comes out. Um, but let's move on to the next, another but headline. Sometimes those, stories, sometimes those stories are planted. Those stories are planted by their hate in order to put themselves in a conversation. We know mm -hmm. how this thing goes. Yeah. So we'll just wait and see uh, what the authentic mm -hmm. list would look like. Hopefully some of the names you just mentioned will not be there. So still staying with the Punch newspaper. Uh, before we leave the Punch newspaper, let's look at this headline. EFCC, Samon Sirica. Quizzes Nigeria Air officials. Yeah, it's 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 um, it's it's one of one of the things that is still surprising to me is what are the safety nets we put in place with respect to checks and balances with um, government officials either elected or appointed abusing the process. Don't forget that under Bari administration, I think the Accountant General of the Federation was arrested mm -hmm. of. Of, 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 was allegedly accused of fraud, arrested, and then uh, the case is in court with respect to how he was able to, to siphon a huge amount of money. And then you begin to wonder, how is it possible for one individual to go ahead and circumvent an entire process, an entire nation, and, and, and then is able to, to get away with blue murder? Mm. When well, the more you look at the Nigerian hair issue, this is just Nigerian here. What about other ministry? Just imagine us doing such like. So if Sirica and then could do what he has done in the aviation ministry, what happened in other ministry? If you look across all the ministry. So what are the safety nets we have put in place? Now you have the legislature that should serve as, as a check and a balance on the excesses of the executive. You have you have the media which has the accountability rule and the watchdog rule to investigate and to throw to life things that are happening. But what we have seen is that it seems that everybody would just turn blind, blind eye when these people are in office. And as soon as they leave office, all of a sudden, everybody becomes, becomes an intelligent officer. Everyone becomes interested in seeing what, in performing the function which the, which the state and the society requires them to perform. As far as... As no, I am know, concerned, Johnson, the issue of... Yeah, with respect to, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me just respond a bit to what you've said. The media has been in the forefront of extraying some of the activities of some of these ministries. Uh, we, must not, um, we must not forget to admit to that truth. Well, I, 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 will, I will engage in a, in a debate with respect to that. But the bottom line, the bottom line is that when the praise dog becomes the reward dog, when the when the when the watchdog becomes the praise dog, and when the watchdog becomes the reward dog, then you turn your blind eye to some certain things. We need to do more. I'm not saying the media is not. It's an industry which I believe, which I belong to. I, I think we need to do. We need to do much more than what what we what we are doing presently. Okay. You can see. You can understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Now the same style, the same playbook that Barry started with in, in, 20, in 2015, when he first came in, when everybody begins to praise Buhari's fighting corruption, is doing this. The same playbook is being played out again. Mm. The same playbook, the same narrative that was used there is what is being used. And it's our own responsibility as the watchdog to throw such light to it. For example, the president has taken one, two, three, four, five steps within two weeks. Let's take the issue of the student loan. Let's take the issue of removal of subsidy. Let's look at one, two, three issues. And then I've seen comments. I've seen so many comments 
people look when people are elected into public office they are not meant to be pressed they are meant to be put under public scrutiny yes if you come into public office you you offer yourself to serve the people are they are they going to clap for you for for presenting this program today once you leave once you leave the set are people going to clap for you oh you've done well today no it's your job yeah. it's what you apply to do yeah. and that's your responsibility you are meant to put scrutiny we are not meant to be a press dog and a lot of time you go just open the pages of newspaper you see the media pressing and pressing and pressing for doing the basic the basic of what they are required to do Okay, now that you've touched on the student loan, let's talk about it. It's in the, on the front page of the Nation newspaper, above the master you have. Student loan law takes off in September. Now, that itself has generated lots of controversies. We've seen some of the articles on it, uh, the conditions given for this loan, and many Nigerians are wondering who and who can qualify indeed for these loans. Uh, what, what's your what take? Have you looked at it? What what's your take? One, one, of, one of the things you always, you always look at is the way they make, uh, what the requirements for you to get the loan. And there's a system we have always put in place in Nigeria, which favors the people that we implement the policy. That is the civil servant. You see the requirement. One of the requirements is that you must get a lawyer with 10-year practice or a civil servant with, with level 12 and above. Now, these are the people that are going to execute the policy. Because who are those that will be in the front line of executing the policies. You have set a trap for corruption. Hmm. You have set a trap for corruption. So some a level 12 officer can just use his name and use 10, 12 students to collect money. What I see, various programs that government have done that you require to get a guarantor that you have used civil servant as guarantor, what has been the outcome of such, such programs? There are numerous, numerous failed programs across board. And then if you look at the conditions that is provided, is it to help an average Nigerian or is it to help highly placed Nigerians? How many downtrodden Nigerians can meet up with the conditionalities provided for in that loan? And I keep asking this question, why is the president in a hurry to sign this, this, uh, this bill into law? Uh, because one, he does not have a, a, an attorney general yet. He does not have an attorney general. So who is giving him the counsel to sign? Who is putting... For example, the student loan was, 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 was sponsored by the Speaker of the Night, Night Assembly. Even before he left the Speaker, he was appointed as, as the Chief of Staff to the President. And then he ensured that the President signed that bill into an act. This one of the first assignments to sign that bill into a, and I asked, has the president see, has he sought legal counsel with respect to sign this 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 bill? And this this bill was passed by the night assembly. The president Muhammad Buhari did not sign them into law. Why did he why is he in a hurry signing this bill into law? Are there a lot of things that we don't know that we need to know? Is there an attorney? Does he have an attorney general that has advised him sign this or don't sign this? And these are some of the areas which I thought that, okay, the media will look at it in that direction. You throw light to all of this issue. Why? If it is so important and so crucial, you have not put in place your cabinet, you have not put in place your cabinet, you have not put in place your advisory committee. You have not, Yesterday, the president just inaugurated the National Economic Council. These are issues that should be tabled first before the National Economic Council. They looked at it, and then they report back to him. This has jubilee have been the first set of assignments given to them. And then within, let's say, he gives them two weeks. And within one, six weeks into his administration, all of these decisions he has taken, all of these bills he has assented to, and then assented to when there is an holistic view, not a narrowed view by some select few. Mm. Okay. Um... So, but... <laughs> let's yeah. uh, let's leave that. It, 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 it. It's unfortunate. Uh, some people are saying that uh, it seems to be looking for validation, and uh, so far the things he's doing, we, we do not understand what it is. Whether he had insight into these bills that he's signing into law, not just the education bill, uh, not just the uh, scholarship scheme that he's oh, not scholarship, the um, 
uh, loan <coughs> scheme that he's talking about, but other things that he has signed into law. How much of the insight does he have into these things? Well, that's the word when, insight. When, that's the word insight. Yeah. You need the benefit of insight yes. to have a first sight. Yeah. So now, um, some people are proposing his economic team, uh, you know, uh, whoever that is or yeah, those are, uh, are proposing a merger for Customs, Nimasa, and FIRS. Do you think that would be a good move? Well, um, for example, we have too many agencies. There's no doubt about that. We have too many agencies. There are multiple agencies. And then what we need, what I think the president needs to do is to go back to the Ansari report. Um, it, should not be in a, it should not be in a hurry. They need to study that report and implement what that report recommended. We have too many agencies. Too many agencies performing the same function. Custom is a revenue generating agency of the federal government. FIRS is a revenue generating agency of the government. The Mass Act is a revenue generating agency of the government. So if you look at the responsibility and the core functions of this agency, more or less like they are the same. In actual sense, FIRS is, should be an umbrella body for all of these for all of these agencies. But uh, uh, my take is it's good for us to 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 to, to downsize and outsize government and also to in terms of the ministry and agency and in terms of the personnel in order to reduce the cost of the cost of governance in Nigeria. That's a step in the right direction. But I advise the president to look at the Honorary report. That report is comprehensive, is thorough, and then we need to implement that report. There's no need for us to 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 set up another committee to look into it. Something has been done. Government is a continuum. Something has been done in the past. Let's look at it and adopt this, and then it will be good for for his administration and it will be good for 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 the entire nation. All right, let's let's look at this, which is uh, very much out there. Um, CBN abolishes multiple naira dollar exchange rates. We took a look at this in depth yesterday, uh, but give us your thoughts on it. Well, um, it's, it's it's a step in the right direction. We'll be waiting for this. We'll be waiting for this, and because um, a lot of people have made money through round tripping, um, and a lot of people have made money exploring that 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 loophole. It's only in Nigeria that you have multiple exchange rate. I don't know whether dollar has a multiple exchange, or whether pound sterling or euro has a multiple exchange, or, or the or the Chinese yen or, or the or, or the Japanese currency. So. It's a step in the right direction, and it's something we need to do to strengthen the Naira. One of the things which I've, I've said over years is that the reason why the, 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 the elites and the political class will never pray for Naira to appreciate is because their assets value are in dollars. Most of their, most of their assets are in dollars, and, and they, are, they, are, they are stored in foreign countries. So, for example, just imagine a situation whereby 100 Naira is equal to a dollar. Oh, a dollar... A dollar is just fifteen naira to a dollar. All those that have that 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 that, that, that have stolen money mm. in from Nigeria uh, that have deposited their money in different foreign accounts. What do you think will happen to their money? So mm. this is just that we don't have the will. I sh I'm sure with the resources we have, if we have the political will, and we see it through, it's just a matter of time. Naira naira to dollar shouldn't shouldn't be more than fifteen naira. Fifty nine to a dollar, and hopefully we'll get there. Hopefully we'll have the will, like some of us have said. Some of the actors and players at the national level now, they've been in government. They've 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 achieved all over whatever they want to achieve. And the president says his lifelong ambition. Probably for the first time in his life, he will look back and see that you know what I have to leave a legacy behind beyond building a political legacy. I must leave a national legacy, legacy of reference point that people can point to and say, "Oh, at least this man did something for this, for this, for this nation, and not for himself." So I think that I pray and I, I pray for him, and that he has the political will to see through some of the policies that have been highlighted with respect to um, with respect to our monetary our monetary policy. And um, one good thing. Is is that I saw from the composition of 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 the of the cabinet, his special advisor, is the separation. 
in the sense that bringing a younger person and then and hold on to handle the financial aspect and then the younger one to handle the monetary aspect. So hopefully bringing Wally Edu and then the I think um the one from I can't recall his name now for a former commissioner in 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 New York State. So I think that the two of them should be able to provide guidance with respect to how we achieve some some there is a need for us to have a stable currency. It is what gives confidence in foreign direct investment. It's also what gives confidence in Nigerians exporting their their produce outside of Nigeria. They, they can they can compete comparatively in international trade when Naira when Naira is stable and does not does not fluctuate like second every second. But as it stands now, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, the Naira is exchanging for. Uh, the dollar is exchanging for 702 Naira. And some people, maybe because they don't have th that much insight into the workings of money, uh, they, they are afraid that it is too much. Officially, 702 Naira. At the, initial, at the initial stage, it will happen like that. And then what, what will happen? At the initial, if government is sincere, yeah, at the initial stage, it will stabilize. It's just something that you have... You are you are you are you, you, you don't you did not allow to go with the market forces. You are regulating there is over regulation and over interference. Now you are now trying to allow the market forces to control. First, there will be this this fluctuation. One of the things as a layman that I've discussed with people is that if government is sincere, look at the telecom sector. Let's look at the telco sector. Now, now how much did we buy SIM when it was initially deregulated. Now, what's SIM now? So, it's the same thing if government is sincere and government allow the market forces and allow active players and government does not interfere in the market and government does not create individual monopoly. Because what we have, so, what we have succeeded in doing is some of our policies over the years is for, is for us to create, to move from government monopoly to individual monopoly. And I hope this government will, will, will not do that. One of the steps they've taken is, okay, three people have been given licenses to import petroleum product apart from NMPC. That's the regulation. That's allowing private actors and players to participate in, in, in the process. And it's just a matter of time. If there is sincerity of purpose, I tell you, what we are experiencing in the telecom sector, what we have experienced in other sectors that have been de deregulated, like the broadcast industry in Nigeria that we, you and I are now exploring, it's just, it, it, it's, it's the sincerity of purpose and determination of the leadership that we have at time that brings about change in the society. But I, I'm just trying to, to, do we really have, um, are we really that better uh, in the telecom um, sector, for instance, we are now buying SIM for maybe 100 Naira. Sometimes you're given for free. And if you even buy for some money, they will give you some bonus. Uh, but the data, for instance, that we were using for a month now is a matter of hours. And nobody can say anything because it's a free-for-all thing. You determine your own rates because it's a free market. Uh, that's what is happening right now. The electricity yeah, sector, comes, electricity as well. That comes where you have the regulatory body. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the essence of the regulatory body. You recall what the Obasanjo administration did then to force down, one, the prices of the SIM, two, the production of recharge card. And then now we move to per second billing. Mm. So it's about those that we have given... Those that we have given responsibility to, those that are meant to do oversight function, uh, and appointing the right people in the right place. And uh, you look at, I don't, you see, sometimes when we review, it's just a critique of the past. And there's no way you review the past without talking about, about, about persons and not related. You, we saw what the S3 Minister of Communication, we saw what he did with the Ministry of Communication. Yes, to it. Minister, you know, a lot of people are put in position of authority under Buhari's administration that do not qualify to even head those agencies and those ministries. And I think these are the areas in which the media needs to throw spotlight 
as the president, Bola Ahmed, you know, is throwing out the names of people that he will be appointing the office. If we see a square peg in the round, we need to shout it out. We need to drum it out. So if you look at the way, and unfortunately, the last administration is one of the few administrations whereby we have somebody being in the ministry for close, ministers being in the ministry for eight years. You know, we are in education, for example, in, in aviation, for example, in works, for example, communication. So you can go on and on and on. Wherever you are, you thought that the level of continuity in this ministry will bring about a change. But what we have witnessed is that even in those ministries where we have continuity, there seems to be a, lo a lot of policy flip-up, and then there seems to be... Um, I don't, don't let me use this word. It will be too, too harsh. And um, it's just that um, I think we didn't get the best value from, from, from some of this ministry where we have super ministers for eight years. Oh, we well. are still talking about the aviation ministry where this Rika was. Mm -hmm. He was minister of state. In the in in the in the first term of Bari, in the second term of Bari, Bari separated aviation from transportation because aviation was under transportation then. He was minister of state in the first in the first term, and in the second term, he was made a substantive minister. And what did we what did what did that Sirika show for it? Nigerian here. Well, that before, is still floating in the go, air. Before we go, let's look at another headline, which may also make uh, <laughs> the blood of Nigerians boil today. Federal government's 819 billion naira extra budget littered with ghost projects. <laughs> so an administration is living in less than one month. Like, okay, like, the administration is living, and then all of a sudden, the National Assembly, you know... <laughs> approves the rubber stamp National Assembly <coughs> approves a supplementary budget for an administration that is living and then you see it was it was not so funny you recall the 2.1 the two the 12 billion um, the 12 billion fire fire truck mm. uh, and the various the various projects that all of every minister was executing towards the chain. There was one that the minister of sports, Tony Dari, was trying to push in concerning the innovation of national stadium and the rest of it. My goodness, some people should go to jail. Honestly, some people should go to jail. Some some people should just should just go to jail. They should just go to jail. They should just they should just go to jail because and that's why you see the president said the president. Just like Pontus Pilate washed his hand of it, as he said, nobody should call him to come and appear in court. That if the, the I mean, President Buhari, yeah. if they are stressing too much and they want to trouble you, you will go to where? You will go to the jail republic. That's to tell you the extent to which the president himself does not even have control over his cabinet. It's unfortunate. It is. Oh, well, we don't know how that's going to be. Uh, ghost projects at this time and all that. Uh, but we also uh, have this story, this unfortunate story that comes from Quara State, that uh, people who uh, drowned, 106 people drowned. And the federal government is vowing to prosecute boat operators. And I asked a question, how much influence did you have? How much sensitization, how much help did they get from the federal government now this has happened the federal government is going to prosecute the uh, boat operators what do you think when you hear this kind of uh, stories it's an, it's, an, it's an executive overage it's an executive overage who is going to prosecute the federal government for the various road accidents that we have mm. or the state government for the numerous portholes we have, this is going to prosecute federal government concerning that. As far as I'm concerned, what we need is for government to look at that sector and to reform that sector. It is not prosecution that is required. It's about reforming that sector. It's about looking at how to intervene in that sector. Government is making money to that sector. How do people in those communities come in across, across, across River Niger, across River Benue, those people, we have left them to be on their own. Mm. What intervention has the state government done with respect to that? 
what intervention has the federal government done with respect to that? It's not, it, 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 they should even thank the, those that are even operating in that sector without any support, without any incentive from government. They are still <laughs> helping to facilitate Sorry. the movement of goods and services across that sector. Excuse me, across that sector. And then what you want to do now? If, if what you want to do now is to prosecute them. Mm. If, without those players, without those local players, what do you think will have happened to the life of people living in those riverine communities? What attention have we paid to them until this death? Do are we even aware of people coming? Uh, you can you imagine what type of boat will carry one hundred people? Are you getting my point? Exactly. Yeah, and then it's just that that one that, that, that caught our attention because they were going for a wedding reception. How many of such had happened for those that are going for a business transaction? Are you with me? Yes. Because this one that is because this one that happened as a communal as as a communal communal impact because a lot of families are involved. It's a per wedding, so it involves the entire community. So that's why this news it. What of those five? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten people that have drowned in the past across this stretch. What did they do concerning that? These are just government should just part intervene of the manifestations. In this yeah, part of the manifestations of the failure we've had over the years. I mean, we've had ministers of transportation come and go. Not many of them, if any at all, has paid much attention to transportation on water. You know, safety in that area. And for, for yeah, 106 yeah, people yeah, to drown. You have, you have a Minister of Transportation that has never experienced what an average Nigerian is experiencing. Amechi was Minister of Transportation. Um, Adisirika, Minister of Aviation. Fashola, Minister of Works. The, the era of making former governors, ministers, I think we should. It's, 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 once you have been an executive at the state level, you call it well, short. Yes. Now, you know, well, you become. Yes. You, it's, 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 I don't know. It's, it's, it's just that. Well, those. Yeah, we know. Let me just, let me just control. Yes. <laughs> let me just control my. Yeah, emotions. we know. Let it's, me just control my. Well, I don't know. It's, it uh, can be they... daunting to analyze some of these things because, yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, Mr. Jude Johnson, for your time, especially since you're a bit under the weather and you still took time to join us this morning. We're very grateful. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Hopefully, exactly. we we'll see the Nigerian here will come to we'll land. Still in there. <laughs> GJ, you had to bring that. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being a part of our show this morning. All right, Jude Johnson, he's a chief lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism. He joined us on Off the Press. We'll be back with our very first hot topic. Don't go anywhere. Stay with us. <laughs>